but it is a belly release because you release it from the belly. We think. Just gonna go get that. Completely went over the top. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with the Gastrophetes. And what I love about this is it is the world's first weapon that the heavier you are, the fatter you are, the easier it is to use. You know, in this modern world, that's gotta be a good thing. But it's actually ancient Greek. This is pretty much, as far as we know, the first crossbow that was ever there. Just about everything about this thing, we simply don't know. So I'm gonna tell you my understandings, my guesses. I'm gonna give you a bit of a tour of this thing. But first of all, we're gonna go shoot it and we'll see what it's about. Down on the range now with the gastrophetes. And what we're gonna do is a few shots so you can see how the system operates and then we'll talk about it. But before we do that, because the whole thing is a little bit weird, I'm gonna explain roughly what you're gonna be seeing. This is clearly a predecessor of ancient uh, Greek and then Roman artillery, that you have a slider here, then you have these uh, teeth down the side here that catch the system, and then the two poles. So the whole slider is in the middle, that goes backwards and forwards. You've got the trigger system here with the, the poles here and the teeth on the side. So what you do first of all, is you lift those out of the way, and then the slider comes forward. Put your fingers on the teeth there, that goes in, trigger bar comes underneath. Now that is all locked in place, you can see that. The two poles come down, ready to engage on that. And then really very simply, and this is why it is good for heavy people, what you do, pop it on the ground. I've got a board here, because you know, I don't want to mark it. You push down, up, and you're ready to shoot. And the heavier you are, the heavier bow you can load. But it is a belly release because you release it from the belly. We think, just gonna go get that. Completely went over the top. I'll go again, shooting a bit lower this time. So, pulls out the way, slider forward, finger on it, trigger bar in, so it's a little bit of a faff. Push down. Now, you can tell from this, it is without a doubt slower than a regular bow is gonna be, but, it does allow you all the advantages the crossbow has, that you can stay ready primed. That's always a good one. Ready for that sh immediate shot when it shows itself. And also, the advantage of untrained levies. Well, as you can see, it wasn't particularly difficult for me to learn how to handle this thing. Once you get the knack of this trigger system with all the setting and the unsetting things, you know, it's not too difficult to use. Accuracy, maybe not great, because it is belly release. It is shooting from the hip, quite literally. It is not this, and, the, and we know that. We know that because of the name. But you know, shooting for distance, lobbing it out there, anyone can do it. And you don't have to be strong. You don't have to be able to load this thing. What I'll do in this first trial now is just try and do it for speed with these three shots. So here we go. taking a little time to aim because I don't want to lose it over the top. Right, and there we go. The distance is 15 meters and that looks to me to be around about 25 centimeters, 10 inches, something like that. So not so bad. Now, one thing to consider about myself versus levies that this would have been given to back in the day is how different am I? How different is my skill, my ability? Well, I shoot, I shoot crossbows, I shoot longbows. I've shot this a little bit, but not a lot. They, of course, wouldn't have shot this at all, but they shoot bows a lot more than I would shoot bows. It's part of daily life back then in a way that it just isn't now. So to say that they're unskilled with bows would be completely wrong. 
you would expect some level of ability out of this, even shooting from the hip. So I don't think I'm going to be massively different to them, possibly even disadvantaged. Let's give it a go, and this time I'm going to really concentrate on trying to get for accuracy. Now this is only 15 metres, but I don't want to lose the bolts, but let's see how we go. It is strange, I've adopted a rather odd shooting style with this. I don't know why that should be. But anyway, here we are. Well, here we are with the three that I shot for accuracy. Now, the windage, the side to side, is really good on these, actually. The elevation, not quite so good. I would have loved that one to be down here. It wasn't. But that's what, fourth, fifth time that I've shot that thing? I don't know. I'm not experienced in it, and I'm doing okay. 15 meters. So a torso, a man's torso would be in big trouble at 25 meters. With practice, maybe 40, even 50 meters, an individual soldier, not a body of soldiers, an individual soldier would be in trouble facing somebody shooting like myself. Now my gut reaction was that shooting from the hip would be pretty much a waste of time. But I think that just very simple empirical experiment there shows that really it's not a waste of time. Yeah, it's a really weird way to hold a bow. I get it. You know, and surely they could have put a shoulder stock on it and all that. But these ideas came later. It works, you know, clearly it works. The thing about the gastrophetes is there is so much we don't know and only a tiny little bit that we do know. So there was an engineer called Hero of Alexandria, died 70 AD, also invented the vending machine, which I think is fantastic. But he did a sketch of it, you can see it here, pretty much gobbledygook and a description that went with it. But that aside, don't forget, this is a machine that was much, much older than him. So at least 400 BC and quite possibly a lot older than that. We don't know when it was first invented, how it was used. Some people, there's a guy called, was a guy called Marsden, who did an awful lot of work on Roman and uh, Greek artillery, real name in the subject. He thinks it was probably stand mounted. More modern interpretations seem to think that it, it was handheld, which is the way that I've gone. We don't really know, but you can tell that it really is a predecessor of the Roman and Greek artillery. It's definitely of that family. But then you come to the name, belly release. Now, the only interpretation I can come and the layout of the machine, as you can see it, is that it is from shooting at the hip, as I have shown you. Now, one of the questions that will come up in comments is, can I shoot it from the shoulder? So, you know, let's try that. Okay. Ooh. Uh, Awkward, I think, is... Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to try because I'm a bit worried about losing the bolt. I don't want to do that. But what I will do, because I've adopted this really strange sort of, almost like an archery pose or shooting gun pose, it just feels natural for me. But, you know, perhaps you actually turn full on target and you shoot it like that. <laughs> Oof, nearly over. That was fine. I don't know. I don't suppose it really matters very much, but I can tell you that shooting from the shoulder with this layout would be really, really quite horrible. But it is, you know, a beautifully easy bow to shoot. And this is knocking on around about 80 pound in draw weight, something like that is what we've got here. And it's pretty, pretty effortless. So, you know, was it a good invention? Yes. Was it ever really used that much? Who knows? We just will never know. So the bow, first of all, on here is actually a modern fiberglass one that I've dressed and painted to look like uh, a composite bow from the time. Now, this would have been a horn and sinew bow back in the day, not fiberglass. And that's why I'm not bothering with any speed tests on this speed of the arrow. There's just no point. You know, just I'm going to give you a number that's not relevant to anything. The rest of it, well, there's so little we know from that sketch that it might be right. It might be completely wrong. You know, this is where we are. This is sort of the established layout of them. Because this looks a lot like a crossbow, at least superficially so, you'd think that there would be some crossover in how the two were used. And I think there probably is in some ways, but in others not. So one of the great advantages with a crossbow is that you can shoot it from cover. You don't have to stand out like you do with a longbow. Now this one, because you shoot it from the hip, actually, you can't really shoot it below, from behind cover unless it's you know, below the knee, pretty much. So that advantage is gone, and you're just back like another bowman. And I think, truth be told, if you're an experienced hunter or experienced archer, you would probably prefer a handbow to this. But the other thing about this 
is it's just like a crossbow in that you can have it locked and loaded and ready to shoot at a moment's notice that you can't do with a longbow. So for that sort of sniping of an individual seeing, you know, the, the leader of a phalanx over there and you think, oh, I'm going to go for him, this is perfect for that. And at 50, 60 metres, he's going to be in danger. And even at 80 or 90, perhaps, if there's four or five of you with these things ready to go, the guy is in really quite deep trouble indeed, even though the accuracy is not brilliant. And that comes back to the accuracy side of it. That sniping is going to be difficult shooting from the hip. Now, you might think, you know, ancient Greeks, pretty smart bunch. They invented this for one thing and vending machines that they would have worked out a shoulder stock. But don't forget, Europeans didn't use them really until about 1500, really. And, and so the whole concept of a shoulder stock being very useful for accuracy is 2000 years later than the invention of this. So, you know, don't beat the ancient Greeks up for being fools and not working it out and shooting from the hip. You know, they did a pretty good job of inventing a lot of other things other than the shoulder stock. And this is not by any means a waste of time as a weapon without the shoulder stock. Would it have been better? Undoubtedly. But it is what it is. Anyway, thank you very much. Little tour of the gastrophetes, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks.